Andrew was just an average kid. Just loved playing football. Loved doing all different kinds of mischief and loved going away on holidays. I took him to Florida one time and he absolutely loved it. Um, but we went to Euro Camp in Holland. And if you ever asked Al, uh, Andrew what his favourite holiday destination was, he would always say it Holland. And I think he used to be looking at him going, it Holland in Florida. <laughs> but he loved Holland. We went all around the world. Um, he just loved for football. Football crazy. And Arsenal was his favourite team. We actually got to go and see Arsenal playing in 2010. And that was a fabulous weekend. He just adored the whole the whole thing. He was just a happy child then? He was a very happy child. He was a happy child until he turned 15 and I was diagnosed with cancer. And that's when everything changed in his wee life. Everything was upside down. He had to come in love with his granny. And I had to stay up in the cancer centre for two months to get all my treatment and that. Um, and when I came back from the hospital, I did notice a change in him. He, he had an attitude problem. And I thought that it was just because you know, he was afraid, afraid to lose me. Because he seemed to blame me you know, for anything happening in his life. It was my fault. But I, I do believe that he's, he's been taking the drugs from then, from when he was about 15, 16. Did you notice a, a big change in him? I noticed a big change in him. And especially because I had been away for two months. Although he came up at the weekend to see me. But whenever I came home then, I, I did see a wild big difference in him. I thought after we well whenever we got back home and we got everything back to normal that he would have came around a wee bit but things didn't go back to normal because from my treatment left me with a damaged spine and so I couldn't walk properly. So we had him move from our house and the wee bungalow and this was a big big thing in his life. And when they moved from our house, he didn't want to move from the house. But the bungalow that I got was relatively near our house. So he was happy enough because he was still within his own wee environment and with his own wee friends and stuff. So, no, but he was okay then. But it was an hour upset in his life. And um, following that, his granny had a massive heart attack. That, he, that shook his world. Then things were starting to loosen up. He nearly lost me to cancer. And then his granny nearly died with a heart attack. So everything has become unbalanced. Then the following year then, his father died. So that was him really threw you under the midst of a tornado. Then after that, his granny was diagnosed with ter terminal cancer. So we knew that she was going. And it was just one hit after an hour that just totally unhinged as, as we were and although he was 16 or whatever 17 he was a big tall six foot three strapping lad and you'd have thought to look at him that he could carry carry the weight of the world on his shoulders but no he, he, he couldn't cope and that's when the drugs really became an issue because i noticed when he went when he would come back in from wherever he was just over the street during the day uh, it would come in from over the street and I could smell this smell off him. It was like a chemical smell, but it was a really disgusting smell. And I would say to him, what's that? What is that smell? Take a coat off to get washed? Because it was so, but now I know what it was. It was that, it was that meth. So. And you, you noticed a big change in him then when he was on it, uh, heavily? You know, he just demanded, he demanded money off me, he demanded just the attitude that he had towards me. He was so angry, so frustrated, so agitated all the time. He was ne never happy, never happy. And then last year things really, really did go downhill quite quickly. 
he took an overdose and I'm on heavy pain medication and he took quite a lot of tablets and he's very lucky, very lucky to even have come around from it because the doctor did say in another 10 more minutes if he hadn't got the lemons within the 10 minutes They were yours were they? They were my, all my medication he took and he was for clocking out that was way back not this February but the February before and ever from then on then it was just a, a fight with men to get him to love he used to cry in my face and say mommy please please just let me die mommy I don't want to be here I don't want to be here anymore why am I not normal why can I not go out like anybody like a normal 18 year old and have a drink and come home he was just lost and stuck in this dark deep place and I couldn't reach him I couldn't you know normally if you say to somebody things will always look better in the morning just no calm down no things were never any brighter from the next day and he would walk up out and, and say to me see this here see this smile on my face mommy this is a fake smile a fake smile and I'm fed up putting on this fake smile and so about after I took that overdose in February I took another one then in June so we got him over to the hospital once again and he was kept on once again because they keep you in for a night and you wear a drop and just to keep an eye on you he was given a wee car to go to see a counsellor at Zest so which he did do um, what did they do for him? he said they weren't they didn't help him much I think because Andrew was so desperate to be he wanted he wanted locked up but not locked up in the sense that she bolted the door behind him locked up in the way that away from his own environment to a safe environment you know because the drugs and that are so easy to get at home he, he wanted locked up secure he wanted to feel safe somewhere and we just we couldn't get him we couldn't get him that type of help the help that was offered to him was uh, inpatient care over at uh, Grantia and that was not what Andrew needed at all he, he needed to be he needed to feel safe away from his own environment take, lifted out of it left it away from everything so that he could give himself a chance do you think of the, the, the times that he, he did need detox or, or taken away do you think a, like a detox crisis centre oh absolutely time? absolutely even for the times you know whenever Andrew was taking the drugs at the weekend um, coming on to me now he took the drugs during the week as well but it always seemed to be the weekend because it was drunk as well they, they wouldn't have he wouldn't have drunk during the week but at the weekend he did a mix the two so the weekend he was very volatile and even if I had I had a number for somebody to ring to get me the help to be able to help me to help my son that I, I was so lost because it didn't seem that, that anyone was listening to my please please you know please help him he, he needs to be locked up and no he doesn't he went all in the morning Constantly told in the morning, whenever they're drinking the drugs, even it would be fine. No, it, it was never fine because Andrew, and I'm not a professional, but I know that somebody that has been so, through so many uh, tragic lifestyle events, your the, the depression would be starting to set in, and I'm not a professional. But I now know looking back, Andrew was severe, severely depressed because he had experienced all these human tragedies. And for an adult to go through what he went through in, so, in such a, a short space of time, you know, people would be looking, there would be alarm bells ringing. But because he was only 17 or 18, I was like, no, nobody wanted to know, you know. He, you think he'd know where to go then? He had nowhere to go. Do you think if he had been just, in a way, lifted into a detox centre, he could have been oh, detoxed? Oh, he could have been saved. He could have been saved. 
because that's what I wanted. I wanted somebody to grab him, grab him and just pull him out of this environment that he was in and give him some respite. The, the biggest thing that Andrew can, did we was the fact that nobody was believing him. Nobody was believing him that he had some kind of mental health problem. And he would say, why is everybody saying it's a drink and the drugs? And it's not the drink and the drugs. And I would say, well, Andrew, see if you stop taking the drink and the drugs to show people there's something wrong with me and it's not the drink, because I'm not taking the drink and the drugs anymore. But he just he hadn't got the, the strength nor the, the willpower to do that. And just uh, as I was saying there, you know, about his death, you know, how did that come about? Um, now, the week before he died, he tried to jump off a fire bridge in September. From that, he was arrested by the police, took to Strand Road Police Station. Never was to, uh, took the accident emergency. Uh, took the Strand Road Police Station, was looked at by a doctor, a retired doctor. Um, and but the stage I knew something was badly wrong and I was shouting to the doctor over the phone, you know, I think he's bipolar, I think he's depressed. I going through everything in my mind because this is not normal. I thought the overdoses was cries for help. I thought he was attention seeking and I was cracking up with him. But when he tried to go off a bridge then the the flags the red flags was out for me. There's something seriously wrong with, with my boy and we need help back time. Was he on drugs at the time? He or? was on the drugs, I I hadn't seen him all that day on Friday and me and my friend happened up to the guild hall because the Shane Phelan was playing at the guild hall and I got a text from him to say are you in the bungalow? I need to get changed and I text no I'll be home soon so that was it went to my bed any other weekend I would have been nervous and anxious you know about and just in the mind or whatever and I don't know whether it's not because I hadn't seen them all out there or not that I, <clears throat> I wasn't expecting that the, the next morning the police knocked at the door um, I just I wasn't expecting the police that next day told me that some things had been collected off the bridge. Andre's coat and passport. Um, that's it. He was gone.